So consumables are a big part of Neverwinter, especially when going into the end game and trying to min-max your effectiveness, whether that's a tank, healer, or a DPS. So in this video, I'm going to go over pretty much all the consumables, let me know if I miss any in the comments below, that you can use within Neverwinter to increase the power of your character. Before we get started though, make sure to pick up your free gift. Again, it'll only be there for 24 hours, so if this video is more than a day old, you missed it. Get this free bag of holding. It'll give you 60 extra slots. Very nicely, they've made it very easy to be able to switch bags you may already have. And if you have a free slot, then there you go, you can put it there. But for example, we can go here, bag management, and let's say we have a bag just here that has got very few slots, this one, 12, and we want to replace it with a bag that has higher slots, we can very simply do so right here. That allows you to very simply switch the bags. Before you would have had to empty one bag and then like remove the bag from the slot down here and then put it back. Now that bag which we did then go and replace should now still be in our inventory. There it is, Fay Bag of Holding. If you haven't got all your slots filled with bags, there we go. We now have it and we get that extra inventory space. My wizard will thankfully accept that free 60 slots as it's uh, desperately needed. So let's get into consumables and belt items within Neverwinter. So you may have seen in my build videos what I generally run with. On my wizard DPS character, I'm going with, for example, this Flask of Potency with the Squash Soup, with the Wildstorm Elixir, and Ratatouille. And that's generally the bread and butter of what consumables I use. And as for the belt items, well, right now it's like a stone of health when you're running challenging content or some healing potions if you don't need that full heal from the stone of health. And then I'm using like the Dragon Fire and I'm missing a decent one to use here on the other slot, which I plan to get the spider totem. So let's go over every single different consumable and belt item that you could be using to optimize your build. As what I use won't necessarily work for you because different classes, different fortes, and different roles, different stats you need to prioritize. So let's jump in. So right here is my entire list. You we can see the general layout is that we'll have buffs in unique colors right here and the ones that have like this section of color. So this kind of yellow, it's got like choose one. And so you can only have one of these electors active at once. When you have a look at, let's say, my build, my character, you can see up here in the top left, you have this purple icon. And this is where you can see what buffs you have active. And there's only a certain amount of buffs you can use together. And so when you have a look at my list, you can see like an elixir. You can only have one elixir, so you have to choose one of the following. You see the different stats they give you and so on. Then you have like potions. You can only have one potion. Again, it's color coded like that. Everything in as the same color here, you could only use one of them. So you would use like a flask of potency or you would use a crafted potion of certain stat, rank 13. You can have lesser ranks than like what ha I have here, but 13 right now with module 24 is the maximum. It is very expensive though. And the plus one variant, is also the best because it gives the most amount of statistics and you'll have the different types of potions. You've got just the blank line there because you'll have each of those different stats here. Then you have like your event food and so on. Now, back to the top again, we have like our campfire buff. And this is something you can very easily make use of just by making sure you go to a campfire. You can see we do have what looks to be like a campfire buff right there, but that's just because we're in a zone which basically has it so that you are going to heal your injuries while you're standing around. But normal combat, you won't have that. And you want to get your campfire buff. And the way you do that is you go to a, a campfire. Right here, you have a, like an invocation circle and it works the same as a campfire. And it gives you that plus one to all of your ability scores, which will increase your effectiveness due to those benefits you gain from them. Then you have your VIP bonus. So if you have VIP, which I don't right now here in this character, you would gain 
bonus hit points. You do have to have rank 3 VIP though, where you add 1% maximum hit points to every member of your group, including yourself. So if everybody in your group has VIP, you gain 5% extra maximum hit points. Kind of pay to win in my opinion, <laughs> especially in that master content where you're really on the borderline edge of uh, dying or not getting one shot. Th that aside, we move to invocation blessings. So every day you're going to be invoking and you can invoke a maximum, I believe, six times. And when you do, you receive an invocation blessing, as you see right there. Now, when you double click these from your, your inventory, you can see you gain a buff up here. And every time you double click it, you can gain a new buff and they give you different set of stats. And you can see again from the list which ones they give you. And it'll depend again on what build you want and you want to be using. Now, you want to also keep in mind that on the right side here, we have the duration of the buff and we have the expiration of the buff. So you can see the first one, the campfire buff, it will expire when you die. And it only lasts 15 minutes, so you want to make sure hop in the campfire after 15 minutes is gone again, or you died. And when I say died, I mean also just getting downed, and then let's say scrolling or somebody picking you up. That, in my opinion, is you dead, and somebody's either reviving you, or you're releasing and going resetting. And so that's what it means on death. And it's the same with the invocation blessing, it will expire on death. So there's a certain amount of buffs that will expire on death and some of those you might not really want to use if you're running into content where and you're new and you might die a lot but you also want to use them if you're in content that's challenging and you know you might die because you want to make it as less challenging as possible and you want to be going in there as effective as possible. It just means you might have to use that consumable again even though you're in combat after you die that's what I do. If I die in combat, I use my flask of potency again and I use my squash soup again and get right back into attacking everything. And that way my stats don't get reduced by not having those active. And so again, we move to those elixirs and the very nice thing is they last for one hour and they persist through death. Now those elixirs, you're mainly getting them through again invoking. You can see when you invoke every day, you're getting these uh, benefits right here and you'll gain these coins ardent coins and celestial coins and those you can spend here in the store and you can buy all of those following elixirs along with this elixir of fate right here which i don't recommend getting save those those coins for these boxes for like cool modes but those elixirs very nice give you pretty neat stat boosts as you, again you can see from here but you can only again use one of those you can't stack multiple of different types they're elixir and elixirs won't stack with each other. Then we go to potions again, and you can see all of them there. And the most unique one is that flask of potency, which we're using. And the reason is because it gives the most amount of statistics. That 5% crit severity is pretty nice. Crafted potions are getting up there at pretty competitive, but they give ratings, which might not fit into a min-max build, whereas the 5% can fit much more easily. Again, looking at the duration expiration, you can see 30 minutes for that potion of potency, but it's an hour for the crafted potions and they persist through death, unlike the flask of potency expiring when you die. Then you have like all the event food. Now I could go and list all the different events which they drop from, but I didn't, but just keep in mind the main source of these event foods are like the summer festival. That is the biggest thing for like the watermelon, the squash soup and so on. There are other events sprinkled here and there that will drop more unique ones like seed bread from April Fowls, your hot wings as well from there. And then you have like your Chinese New Year with the Moshi and the Nangoa and so on. You can see again all the stats that they're giving. Just keep in mind all of those only last 30 minutes and they expire when you die. So you're going to use them again when you die. And that's it pretty much for all the stats there. Yes, I know there's like legacy versions, which might give 10% power and 10% accuracy, but I'm not going to include these as they're going to no longer be available. And they're a resource that is slowly drying up as the players use them. Not something I recommend making a build to rely on. Then we have the stronghold food. You can see that all there. And that recently got improved to its effectiveness. So you now have each of the different types there, each of them giving 20,000 hit points and then 4,000 of a statistic. The Sambucade is unique as instead of giving the 4,000 of a stat, it gives 5% movement speed. Very oddly though, that 5% movement speed expires when you die. So just keep that in mind. Then you have these scrolls of fate, not something I would worry about. And you can see 
like I, I don't use them in my build because they are very rare and they can be very expensive to get the ones you want. They come from this winter festival and you can see I have like a bunch of scrolls of fate just here. You have different ones that give you different statistics and like when you use it, you double click it and you can see it on your buff bar as well. Just there we got the accuracy boost and it lasts you that 30 minutes. But again, keep in mind it will expire when you die and you can get ones with all these different stats. So if you're seriously min maxing, well, you could fit those in your build, maybe the accuracy one, but to be honest, don't worry about it. Then you have like potions and scrolls against dragon types and drakes are also considered dragon types. So keep that in mind and you can get them up to rank five, the newest ones anyway. There's like ancient ones as well with 10% and they give 10% damage against dragons and 10% damage reduction against dragons. They last you an hour and persist through death. The older ancient ones won't actually persist through death and they only last like 20 minutes or something. You'll use those when you're running like Master Tima and Crown of Keldegon. You generally get them nowadays from doing your dragon hunts from Dragon Slayer. You get those consumables just here. Otherwise, you can see we have like our belt items. Again, you can only use one of these and they'll give you like statistics. Your Awakened Forger's Box, your Perfect Spider Totem, and your Adorable Pocket Pet. And you can see they gave a bunch of stats and they have a weird thing of where they'll give like one of a stat and then give you a chance to get a set of other stats. And the Forger's Box, it's like a chance to get one of each of those following, either 2% accuracy combat damage, so on, or 6% action point gain or recharge speed and the spider totem it's like 2.5 confidence advantage one percent damage against drow and then one of the following sets so it's either two percent crit strike plus stamina regen or two percent accuracy plus action points and then two percent power or and two percent recharge speed so just keep that in mind and there's also the pocket pet which i don't recommend spider totem and forges box are the way to go for those extra stats and you can't use like two of the different ones you can't use multiple of the same ones either otherwise we go to like the damaging belt items so you have like the wondrous to hiki the never winter hawk and the dragon fire they're all deal damage again you can only use one of them and you can see kind of on average what damage they're dealing this is like in single target the majority of the time you have like the wondrous to hiki of two percent the never winter hawk at four percent the dragon fire at six percent again that's all single target rated overall damage and if you're to use it in aoe the wondrous to hiki is pretty good dragon fire is also pretty good in aoe and the hawk is just single target so whatever in aoe and then you have a bunch of other consumables right here now i have them in the same color as i don't want to make it kind of a mess by giving them each of a different color but you can use multiple different ones of these on your belt items like you can use all three lil res bells they're not great and oops i never filled out the lil res bell of celerity i'll do that before i put give you the link below to this and it basically gives your companion 20 percent recharge speed which i've tested and doesn't seem to work at all but you have the lucky coin it's just 500 of ratings you have the other bells there increasing companions damage which is all right but just not reliable, not any good. You're better off taking a forger's box and one of these damaged ones and then like a heal potion or stone of health. And then you have your intense injury kit, your divine injury kit and your portable altar. Yes, maybe I should have thrown in stone of health here, but yeah, a stone of health, if you're watching this video and you got this far, is gonna instantly heal you to full and you can use it once every 18 seconds. It's a massive bonus for challenging content and it's something you definitely want to use on your belt items. If you're going the budget side, it's definitely heal potions. You just, you kind of really need to have one of those just because you need that emergency heal button if the healer is not paying attention or something to get you back to full so you avoid dying. You don't want to have like three belt items Yes, you can get away with it if you have a really good healer. You don't want to have like three belt items that are like none of them are going to heal you. Just my tip and experience from playing. You can see the rest of them there. Very nicely, when you don't have VIP, you can use injury kits to remove the injuries you receive upon dying. When you're dead, dead and go back to campfire, you might receive injuries. And then also portable altars will be able to remove all the skulls. Like if you're running your dragon hunts and when you kill the dragon and he phases and moves on to the next arena, you want to make sure you use portable altar in between when you're out of combat to cleanse all of the revived sickness if anybody has died in that. Just keep in mind if you go in combat, you can't use it. And if you end up going in combat, the thing will disappear. 
And lastly, you have like these belt items, which are like these horns. The Alliance Battle Horn is no longer available, but I believe the Champions one and the Pristine one are still available from like the Siege of Neverwinter from doing heroic encounters. The benefits there just really aren't great. Yes, the Alliance Battle Horn is good and some classes will use it. I don't really recommend it as a DPS, maybe in specific content, but as a healer or tank, it can be useful if you just need an emergency daily power every 10 minutes. Just keep in mind, yeah, a 10 minute cool down on those that is pretty much every single consumable and belt item that i could find within neverwinter that's up to date yes there's some older ancient items which you may no longer be able to obtain and so they're kind of irrelevant for people making their builds and new players coming into the game but again if i've missed anything feel free to leave it in the comments below hopefully this has been somewhat helpful to you guys again it's module 24 and they will most likely add new consumables belt items down the road so just be aware of that and if we're in later modules try and have a look around if they added anything new that's maybe better than something else that you might want to use on this list ultimately I generally use the campfire buff, the VIP bonus, the invocation blessing, your elixir, your potion, your event food, and the stronghold food. And the rest, I don't accept the belt items. We use the damage item and the like stat bonus, either forger's box or spider totem. And that is it. That is it for everything I use. I don't see the point in using scrolls of fate. Yes, if you're running dragon content, you can run the scrolls and the potions. Not so important unless you're running master content versions of it. And that's about it. Special thank you again to all of these channel members for helping me keep my channel going. A late Merry Christmas to you all. And hopefully you have a good 2023 if I don't get back to you before then. We'll see you guys around and goodbye for now.